Hello everyone, um, thank you for coming. What uh, we are about to speak today is uh, Bluetooth security and actually we were focusing on Android smartphone and some kind of interesting stuff. So the talk will be divided in two parts. The, the first part we are giving you a little overview about what is Bluetooth and, sorry, and how does it work. And in the second part we will focus on the new stuff, okay? So, little introduction. Uh, I'm Matteo Beccaro. I'm security consultant at Secure Network in Italy. And theoretically, I am also a student. And let me give the word to my friend, the other Matteo. Hi all. I am Matteo Collura. So, same first name. You can make some confusion maybe sometimes. I am a student at Politecnico di Torino. This is the logo. And uh, I'm an electronic engineer researching different fields such as Bluetooth and NFC. And um, okay, here you find some infos about my contacts. Okay, so uh, let's start this talk um, from the name of Bluetooth because it is nice to spot this nice Scandinavian humor thing because the name Bluetooth actually comes from the name of a king of Denmark, I think, of the 12th, uh, 12th century. And his name was uh, Harald and the surname Bluetooth. And as you can see, those runic uh, character uh, stands for H and B. They melt together and this is in the name of Bluetooth, the logo of Bluetooth. Okay, this was a nice uh, telling about that. And it is a cable replacement protocol, actually, and it works uh, at the same frequency as Wi-Fi, more or less, ultra high frequency, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, 79 channels, usually, and so it is a multipath um, and adaptive frequency hopping uh, transmission. Um, okay, this is some infos regarding the, the architecture. Well, actually, it is not so useful from the point of view of the user. Maybe it is uh, useful for the designer because um, uh, we can see there are a lot of protocols uh, we may use uh, uh, in order to build our, our stack and our architecture. And uh, first you start from a physical uh, layer uh, in which you select your proper radio and then on the top you put your baseband and here there comes uh, some very uh, let's say important and mandatory protocol uh, this one um, is required in order to establish and manage the links with our devices and uh, it comes along with this the logical link control and the adaptation protocol and uh, they're used in order to, um, let's say, link the devices together. And then the service discovery protocol is another mandatory one. And um, so you can build so many different stacks and here, but it is not so useful from the user point of view. Um, okay, there, there has been so many updates as regards Bluetooth, and from version one and up to now to version four, 4.2. Uh, first of all, uh, they started the, in, um, well, they introduced the, the physical address for the Bluetooth in the first version, because obviously you cannot target a Bluetooth device without knowing its address. So then it became a, a IEEE standard in 2002 with version 1.1. Then introduced the adaptive frequency hopping spread spectrum. Um, that was uh, in order to make it uh, robust and resistant uh, to interferences and eavesdropping. Well, theoretically. Uh, after that, they, they know how it was made. And it was, uh, well, not so simple, but uh, uh, it was possible to eavesdrop a Bluetooth communication. And uh, um, after that, from version two, um, 
was introduced the enhanced data rate for faster data transfer. So um, two devices actually uh, were, um, it was easily to, to transfer a big amount of data between two devices. And two new modulations, the Gaussian frequency shift king and the phase uh, shift king were introduced. So this is just for telecom people. I don't know if there are telecom engineers here, and they're glad to hear about it. Uh, then from uh, version uh, 2.1, a very big uh, update uh, regarding the secure simple pairing. Before, because uh, before this update, uh, well, the, um, the pairing mechanism was not so uh, well secure, let's say. Uh, we are speaking about security, but we will see later. And from version three, uh, some updates regarding data transfer, because uh, when you have very high data to be transferred, um, you use the Bluetooth um, connection in order to make the pairing and exchange some keys while you are transferring data using a wireless, well, uh, 802.11 uh, protocol. And um, Unicast connectionless data was an update um, for the use of Bluetooth, for example, in museums on places where you need to send little pieces information of data to some devices. And this was done bypassing, well, not considering the whole procedure of connection between two devices, just uh, sending little pieces of information. From version, point, uh, version 4, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy was introduced. And it is called uh, Bluetooth Low Energy or Smart Bluetooth, it depends. And uh, from version uh, 4.1, um, they lowered the consumptions. Well, uh, maybe you heard about uh, the, um, low energy Bluetooth as uh, the, the protocol, which is uh, um, consuming the uh, few power because the duty cycle has been improved and so uh, the discovery time has been limited so that the transceiver is not on uh, so long and uh, you are lowering the consumptions. From version 4.2, uh, the data packet of low energy has been extended to um, from 20, 22 to 27 bytes to be transferred. And we will speak about secure connections of low energy. Uh, so some, I, I will quote some of the past vulnerabilities and uh, regarding Bluetooth. And um, let's start with uh, Blue Snarf. Um, it was uh, published in the late 2003 uh, by Holtman and Lowry, and uh, it was a talk uh, given, um, well, so, some papers you will find online, and uh, actually it is uh, exploiting um, some insecurity of the uh, OBEX protocol. Um, the goal of this, uh, well, this exploit, um, by this exploit, you can make some easy get requests to common files uh, at the time uh, you applied this vulnerability um, on mobile phones and pocket palms because there was the, uh, the most common devices with Bluetooth enabled and uh, there were the devices where you can get some information exploiting this, uh, well, using this exploit. And so if you make some get requests targeted to common files such as uh, uh, calendar, or uh, contacts, uh, you, you know the, the name and the path, and you actually were bypassing the, um, um, the security manager channel and uh, just going through this uh, uh, protocol of exchanging files. So the user uh, was not seeing any prompt on its device and there was no authentication needed. Uh, then, uh, I will quote Bluebug, which was a, a nice exploit by Adam Lurie and Martin Herford. And we, have the, we are lucky because he is sitting here right now and uh, he, will be glad, I, he will be glad, I think, to uh, explain if you have more questions because, of course, better than me because uh, he, he discovered this. So it was presented at DEF CON 12 in 2004. 
2004, and um, it, it uh, was regarding the Bluetooth implementation on uh, mobile phones, especially uh, Symbian OS. So uh, I want to know how many of you uh, did actually pawn a Symbian OS uh, phone? So raise your hand. How many of you? So, so many? So few of you? No one of you pawned actually a Symbian OS smartphone. Uh, it was so fun. Martin, you don't count. Huh? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> really? Uh, bad thing, because I, I remember when I was, uh, I think, 13 years old, it was the time. I, I'm, I'm young, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm just 21. Uh, at the time, I was 13 years old, 14 years old. And I remember it was so funny to play with those nice uh, vulnerabilities because they collect them all in a proof of concept uh, application called Bluver. And it was so funny to hug the, uh, your friend phone when they leave their Bluetooth on and you just connect the, to them. And uh, it was possible to control the device. Uh, well, s uh, send some controls, like uh, uh, send an SMS to another number without um, making them see that you were doing that or calling other people. So uh, when we were at school, for example, you, you were also able to make them ring their phone and they say, whoa, fuck, what's happening right now? And the teacher, whoa, what are you doing with your phone? It was so funny, man, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, and uh, so you were able also to download the items via Obex protocol. Uh, it was for maybe the first time uh, smartphones had some cameras on it, so sometimes you were getting some pictures. Uh, let's say, well, some very hot pictures from, well, at the time we were chill, well, um, boys, guys, so it was not legal, but for just our fun, you, you find some pictures of people, I don't know, playing at home, so you dressed very badly, and you say, oh, hi, what were you doing with your mom, maybe doing something in the kitchen, uh, I don't know, so you were, doing, hey, I got your, this from you, oh, how come? And it was so funny. <laughs> and so thank Adam Laurie and Martin Herford for this. <laughs> and then another one I want to quote, Blue Chop. And uh, it was useful to, um, to break <coughs> Bluetooth Piconets, so the connection between um, some devices. And this um, was possible provided the master device uh, was supporting multiple connections. Uh, so um, the only thing you had to do was poofing a random slave uh, out of the Piconet, and uh, um, so spoof his address and contact the master. At the time, the master was saying, oh, oh, I have two devices the same, what the hell? And the Piconet was disrupted. Uh, then I will quote other um, um, known uh, uh, exploits like Blue Dump uh, in order to get the link keys, Blue Bump in order to push and the link keys, but there are a lot of things. I will leave the references to if you want to, uh, let's say, know more about them. And so a little um, um, explanation about the pairing, and then I will leave for the new stuff, which is more maybe more interesting and funny to, to hear. Uh, okay, this is how the legacy pairing procedure worked before um, version 2.0. So uh, there were two devices, device A uh, as initiator device, and device B as a responder. And the initiator was, is saying something like, hey, I want to connect you. Uh, this is my random number I, I created right now. And device B said, okay, thank you for giving me. And uh, is just computing by an algorithm, the E22 algorithm, and uh, it takes as inputs the uh, address of device B, a pin number inserted and uh, the length of that pin, and random previously created. The device A makes the same exact thing, and there is no check between the two devices if that the link key um, created is the same. Actually, 
This check happens later, um, when there is the authentication procedure. And that time, uh, it works in this way. The, the verifier just sends a random number to the claimant and say, oh, this is my random number. The claimant computes another, by another algorithm, um, an hash, uh, as res, called here, and transmit back to device A, which, is, which computes the same exact, um, uh, which applies the same exact uh, encryption algorithm and checks if the two are equals. Uh, this time, uh, if they are equal, the authentication happens. But this link key is the link key previously generated, so no check if it was the same uh, at the time. So here there are a lot of exploits, uh, but uh, we are not speaking about them now. And after version 2.1, here comes the secure simple pairing. So the device A, the initiating one, uh, generates a random number, an A, and the device B, the non-initiating, uh, makes the same, but another random number. Then the previous, then this uh, uh, pairing uh, mechanism, uh, the two devices have already exchanged their public keys, named the PKB and PKA, PKA. So the device B will send uh, um, the result of this computation, of this algorithm, to the device A, and they will exchange their random numbers. Then uh, the device A will check if the algorithm worked well and uh, compute some results and check. Uh, each one computes a number, and the users at the last step on their display, they visualize the final number, and they have to say, okay, it is the same on the two sides, in order to confirm the pairing. Just the last thing about a Bluetooth low energy uh, encryption bypass, uh, there are three different keys needed to establish a connection in uh, Bluetooth low energy, and the nice thing about this is that uh, after the temporary key, TK, named TK, is uh, generated, um, the way in which it is generated is actually transmitted in plain text over the air. So, uh, the problem is that if I'm able to decrypt uh, the TK, actually I'm able to, um, to get the short-term key and the long-term key uh, from this procedure. So it is a problem. And there are just three ways in which the TK can be uh, established. Well, if the pairing mode is just works, is a name for uh, the pairing mode, the TK is set to zero. So, simple. Um, if it is a six digit pin, the TK is uh, 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 100, well, it is just a six digit, uh, six, uh, digit number padded to 120 bit number. And it is, can be easily uh, brute forced uh, using a PC, and it can be easily brute forced even offline. Less than one second. If it is out of band, uh, well, it means that um, that passage is transmitted in, uh, in another uh, spectrum band, and so it is not so easily to be detected. So, uh, temporary key, okay, I just wrote, fuck yourself, because it will be actually kind of impossible to find that if it is well chosen. Um, but never say never. And uh, if we get the temporary key, so we get the short-term key and the long-term key, and then we have the answer to all the questions for 42. And, uh, so um, that's it for, for this part, just I will leave one sentence my professor used to say in his lectures uh, about this passage, the out of band. Because if you are sure uh, you are fucking someone uh, saying, okay, you will never find it, well, uh, look at your back, look behind you, because sometimes there is someone else who's gonna fuck you before. <laughs> so be careful doing this. <laughs> okay, so I will leave. Uh, the, back to my friend. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, let's go on, on the some new stuff. So, a little overview about what smart lock, smart unlock is. Um, it's a feature introduced in Android 5.0 Lollipop and it enables the, the user to unlock the smartphone by passing his lock screen if some condition are met. 
and those condition can be location unlock in which you, the user can set like a geofence and if it within this geofence the and the android smartphone is automatically unlocked then we have the nfc unlock in which you know the device must be near a nfc tag previously saved and if so then the device um, automatically unlock then we have the the face unlock which is just a biometric face scanner something like that um of course the face must be saved before you know and then we have the body unlock which i actually have no idea what it is i mean the problem is that the smartphone is in contact with a body not your body so if i stole your smartphone it will be unlocked also with my hand so why put up a lock screen anyway <laughs> um and then we have the bluetooth unlock which is in what we are interesting now uh, so the Bluetooth unlock maybe is the most used feature. I actually use it in my car when I'm driving and I should not text. So I can bypass my lock screen and text quickly to not be so by the police and stuff like that. Um, practically, the user must say, okay, I have this pair device and I can mark one of them or more than one of them as trusted. And then from this moment, every time I'm connected to this device, um, the lock screen is bypassed. I don't have to put my pin code. I don't have to do my swipe thing. And, you know, what's the problem? Uh, actually, the problem is that in uh, Android version, pure Android 5.1, the link key is not checked to verify the Bluetooth device. What does it mean? It means that if I have a, a previous saved connection, I mean, uh, the link key is not necessary for the connection. So basically how the Bluetooth uh, unlock works, I have to initialize a connection. This can be done by the smartphone or the Bluetooth device itself. And we have two possibilities. If the MAC address of the Bluetooth device is known, then we don't have to check the link key and just give some details, get some details from the device, like what kind of device is, is some headset or, or um, you know, car Bluetooth enable or something like that. Otherwise, if the MAC address is not known, then we have to start the authentication process we saw before. Then we can do all the other stuff and end the connection. So from this, from this picture, you can see there is only one thing we need to know to create a connection uh, to the Android device, which is the MAC address of the, of the target device. And to get the MAC address, actually, we don't require all the MAC address. In Bluetooth, you just need to know four bytes, the least significant four bytes of the MAC address in order to establish a connection. And actually, we have two possible, two possible solutions, the brute force solution and the sniffing solution. In brute force, the problem are that it's low, it's expensive, and after all, it's not a good idea. The sniffing solution has some cons too, which is they, it requires vicinity of the victim. Uh, the target can become aware of you, which are trying to do heavy things with your computer. And you need to sniff the authentication process in order to get the four uh, bytes of the MAC address. Uh, so we said that brute force is low because the MAC address cannot be brute forced offline. We need to create each time a new connection with a new MAC address, and it takes time, a lot of time. Uh, it is expensive because we can try to speed up the process, parallelizing, creating, having more Bluetooth dongle or stuff like that, and create new connection with each dongles. And so we have to buy a lot of dongles. It can be expensive. And it's, as I said before, it's not a good idea because we need to brute force like 42 bits of data. It's not possible after all. So... Another, the other idea is sniffing. Uh, as I said before, sniffing has also three problems. Uh, you have to be near the victim, and in order for your Uber tooth or whatever you're using to sniff the Bluetooth connection to intercept the, the packets, uh, you need to intercept an authentication process to get the whole MAC address bytes you need. So it's not that easy. And the target can become aware because, you know, we are not like normal people. They saw us strange way. 
I, I mean, if you are at your Starbucks and see someone like this one playing around, <laughs> this can be a problem. I actually, I think this, uh, this guy is awesome. I, I saw the picture like when I was in high school, <laughs> that wow, I won't become this guy. If anyone know who he is, please tell me. <laughs> anyway, le let's go on. The, so our solution is like an hybrid approach. We know another thing about in uh, Android devices. Actually, these things is true also for other kind of devices. Like in my car, happen the same thing. Android automatically sends out like beacons. You know, maybe you're familiar with beacons in wireless in Wi-Fi solution. And Android do almost the same thing. It try to connect to previous saved device, sending out part of their MAC address. So since the trusted device must be already been paired with the Android device, the beacons contain also the MAC part of the MAC address of the target device. So we can intercept those beacons which are in clear text, retrieve three bytes of the MAC address and brute force the remaining byte, which means 256 possible MAC address, which is way less than 32 bits of entropy. Moreover, the only the last byte we need is also the manu is also part of the manufacturer byte, the manufacturer part of the MAC address. So the real possibilities are much way less. Oh, okay, now we have a, like a little demo showing you that <coughs> how does it works. Uh, I'm sorry that the video is a little messed up. I you fucked, fucked it up. up. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, we like recorded it in the night. Uh, you know, Vegas parties, Defcon. You know, so there is some. I try to explain it if I remember. Okay. So how does it how does it start? Okay, wait. I had this Windows solution. <laughs> Just a second. Okay, okay, okay. So basically what we are doing now, okay, it's go on and back. Sorry. Okay, we have our totally legit MAC address for um, our computer. And what you're doing now is like scanning if there is some device. Uh, actually, we are looking for a specific device, which is our my headphone. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So the highlighted Mac address is the my headphone Mac address. Please don't fuck with my head with my headset, <laughs> please. Um, okay, so we need to spoof this address in order to create a connection. So we use the BD address utility in order to do that. And um, after some glitch of the video, we should see that the MAC address is now changed. Just reset the interface, the Bluetooth interface, to apply the changes. And we need to just to make the, um, the, the device, the computer Bluetooth visible. So the, the Android phone can scan us and try to connect. So we do that, we start. A HCI dump, which just intercept all the HCI packets in order to see what's going on, and then from the um, this is my uh, lap, yeah my tablet with the Android 5.0.1, and we are in the lock screen actually, and we start Bluetooth. It automatically try to connect. We see the my tablet MAC address. Uh, wait just a second, please. Okay, here, this is my tablet MAC address. It's not randomized. Again, please don't fuck with my tablet. And uh, after the connection starts, we can see from the tablet view that, okay, you see the little lock, lock uh, here at the bottom? It's open and so, the lock screen is actually bypassed. I can unlock the device and you know browse it and do stuff, whatever I want. And this works for a 
fixed amount of time. After that, the Android device try to send data to the Bluetooth device. And since the link key is not the same, because we actually don't have the correct link key, uh, it recognizes these things and drop the connection. So we will see in a moment that uh, from HA's HCI dump, the connection is dropped. Okay, just, I got a notification and here we are, okay. remote user terminate connection. So that's the, the way it works. Uh, actually, we didn't brute force anything, we didn't do that because we had no time to create like proof of concept thing and we will try to do that in the future, release it on GitHub or anywhere open source, you know. Okay, so that's, that's nice. We have only one problem, that uh, our Android device sends out beacons for all the previous connected device. So how to fix that? Well, actually Android 5.1 had a nice feature. From the lock screen, I can choose which device I want to connect to. And so I can send uh, beacons only for, for that device. So if I see a computer, it's probably not a trusted device. While I, if I see a smartwatch or something that have more possibilities. So I have uh, another little demo for you, which I actually just show these things. Let's hope it works. Okay, so this is uh, my computer with the Ubertooth scanning, uh, intercepting uh, the clear text packets, the so-called beacons. <coughs> And from my, my smartphone, I just enable Bluetooth and we will see that, okay, we will see that it automatically try to connect to my headset and in the Hubertooth screen, we see LAP, which is the part of three bytes of the Mac address we need to establish the connection. So just clear text data, pretty easy to intercept. And now we just need to brute force one byte. Uh, actually, this is done without the handset near the, the, near the smartphone, so there is no need to have both of the devices together. Okay, so this is fixed, actually, in Android 5.1, I think. The Android security team fixed it. So the link key now is checked, and, but there is still a problem because the API are not fixed yet. So if you have an Android device uh, with the version prior 5.1, you have the smart unlock feature uh, still vulnerable, so don't enable it, I think. And otherwise, only the API are vulnerable. And what does it mean? It means that, uh, sorry, there is no method to check if the connection between a Bluetooth device and your Android smartphone is uh, on an encrypted channel. So. There is no way to check if the link key is correct or not. And we said that to the Android security team and they told us, wait, there is the feature is in the source code of Android. Check it, this link, uh, and this is the, the method actually. But it's not present in the say, SDK yet. And this was true the, in April and it's true also now. So actually I think they probably implement it in uh, Android M or whatever, I don't know. So, okay, but you know, Android Smart Lock is fixed, so we are pretty safe now, right? No, because we have a third part application. Um, actually, there is some application which uses this feature, some application which implements the Smart Unlock for Android device uh, pure version five. So if you don't have a lollipop, you, but you want the Smart Unlock feature, you can download the application and set all the things, so then what I? Okay, this video is really messed up. I think we were drunk, completely drunk. Probably you won't see anything. Sorry for that. There is also my big face. I don't know if you can see that, but there is... We, we should not tell them what time we recorded that video. We should not. No? no. Okay, so <laughs> it was in the morning, we were totally fine. <laughs> Okay, let's start the video. So I repeat, sorry for that, I tried to explain what you should see. Okay, actually, we have our, again, we have completely legit MAC address, which is Coca-Cola. Um, okay, this is almost visible. 
and we are try to change it again to the <coughs> my headset MAC address. Then we start uh, we reset the interface and start um, and sorry, and uh, we will see that device is act the MAC address is actually spoofed. So we just need to make the computer in visible to to other devices. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, actually, it was what we were seeing, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. He was recording. <laughs> okay, so, wow. Uh, okay, we, we put the device in um, visible mode, and then we start the HCI dump again to see what's going on. And then we move to my tablet with Android 4.4.4 point something. I, okay. And just turn on the Bluetooth, it automatically tries to connect to the computer, you see, okay, and it's a very shitty video. You can see device unlock, I don't know if you can read, but it's written device unlock, trust me, please. Uh, we see in the, in, the, in the computer view that we have the connection, the connection is terminated right after that, but we actually had time to unlock the, the, the tablet and you know, browse the, the video, browse the photo, get some porn picture, whatever. <laughs> no, it's not your device. So after that, the, the, after the connection is dropped, the lock screen is enabled again, but if you already unlock the device, you can just don't lock it again and browse it, <laughs> bring it home and reset it, you know, whatever. So, okay, thanks God the video is over. And let's go to FutureWorks. So just a few things about our FutureWorks. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, okay. Just something about our future, FutureWorks. As you can, as you know, probably, uh, the eye of the uh, world is growing up very fast and quick. So uh, IoT devices are going to be more, 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 more. Maybe they are following something like more slow and getting small, but spread over the world. And so we are focusing our next researches on those devices. And uh, by the uh, at the time, right now, um, we have some concepts about uh, smart locks, which are those kind of locks. Smart locks. Yeah. So please choose, <laughs> choose those locks for your, your door. They are completely secure. Send the address. Yeah, send us where you live and <laughs> we will make a check if it is working. <laughs> we are Italian, we can prepare dinner, some food, we can have a dinner together. You know. Bring a coffee, yeah. <laughs> so uh, smart locks, are, we, we have one and we just bought, so uh, we are going to spend some time on it. And then some other devices like Fitband and like Jobon, uh, Fitbit, those kind of bands that are working on low energy Bluetooth. And this is our future work. So maybe you will see us uh, again in the next month with new things, I hope so. And uh, so um, just want to thank you for your patience and your willing to come here and uh, look at our talk. Really, thank you. And now it's the no, sorry. And now it's QA time. Q and A time. You have to <laughs> ask question. You know, it's not go away time, but. <laughs> Okay, turn off your Bluetooth. Oh, there is uh, okay. 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 Question over there. Yeah, the the white paper of that, the, the, all the slides, and I think I won't put the videos, but everything else will be online. Uh, I think I put on my GitHub and probably on the DEF CON website. Other questions? Don't be shy. 
Hold on, let me, let me just get the mic just one second. Sure. Hey, we got, we got time for a couple more questions, but if you are leaving, please leave through the back or the right-hand side. Do not go this way because that poor guy with the red shirt over there will just push you somewhere else. What's that? Yeah, the right side. Oh, uh, so can, can, can we have a microphone for that guy over there? Oh, I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, a Windows phone. It's a new, it's a new brand, you know. Smart lock. Uh, oh, sorry. I, 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 smartphone. Sorry. Uh, be something. Oh, it's called Danalock. Danalock. You know that? It's European, uh, made in Danish. Danalock. Okay. Um, we both. It, it's quite expensive. I think. I pay that like three hundred dollars or something like that, um, but we actually try to gather some money to buy other other locks as well. Like I think the one is called uh, oh I don't remember the names, but we want to try three four locks and test some things we have in mind. So if you have some bitcoins to share or to donate, we are no no we don't accept bitcoin after empty box. <laughs> Anything else? Oh yes. What? S smart card? Oh, I never saw a smart card with Bluetooth. Sorry. Do you have one? Oh. No, not not smart card. Oh, smart car, car. Uh, oh, machine, oh, machine. Oh, sorry, sorry. No. No. Because I'm I'm poor. I don't have a car. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Uh, actually, I don't have a car with the possibility to unlock it with Bluetooth. Yeah? Oh, me too? Okay. Can we have a microphone, please? <laughs> because I'm... I can hear, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Have you guys worked with the uh, Apple HomeKit yet? We understand Apple is requiring uh, 30, 72 bits of uh, security for Bluetooth to connect or with, you know, for uh, the IoT stuff to, be, to qualify for HomeKit? No, no, we actually don't, sorry. I recently ran across a new target for you guys, a Bluetooth vending machine payment system. Uh, there are no Bluetooth vending machine in Italy, yeah. sorry. Well, there's actually, you know, there's actually one if you want to go play with it at the uh, Atomic <laughs> Museum. I, 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 I think that's illegal. Just <laughs> give me the address, please. Well, no, okay, okay, joking. Thanks. Uh, what, what is Anyone it? else? I need the address. Bueller? Bueller? No? All right, well, in any case, I want to thank these guys. We will bring them out into the main hallway. If there are any other questions, feel free to go. I'm, I'm not done talking yet. Okay, now you can clap. Thank you once again.